We will now go into the second special lecture. The second special lecture will be by the well-known founder Chi Chao Hu of SES to talk about the future of EVs. I think many people will be interested in this topic. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, so the, a big part of decarbonization is transportation, moving from gasoline to clean and sustainable electric cars. And today I want to talk about the future of transportation and also three things, how government entrepreneurs and also uh, artificial intelligence can play a, a big role in this. Do you have a clicker? Next slide, please. So today, if you look at the automotive industry, the transportation industry, we are going through probably the most exciting transformation in the last 100 years. Um, so 100 years ago, um, we went from riding horses to driving cars. That was 100 years ago. And then now we are going from gasoline to electric. And then this is one of the biggest transformations in this industry in the last century. And just in the last one year since the pandemic, actually probably one of the biggest, biggest uh, benefit or a positive outcome of the pandemic is this global movement. Every major government and um, every major car company has made a commitment to switch to electric cars and only produce electric cars in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, car companies have committed in the next 10 to 20 years that they will stop producing gasoline cars. So, and also there has been a huge shakeup in the car industry. Just about one year ago, the traditional car makers, uh, Toyota, Volkswagen, used to be the biggest car companies in the world. And today, you have several new car makers, especially Tesla, in terms of market cap, is now bigger than all the other car companies put together. And then if you look at the other uh, top global car makers, also several newcomers, BYD, NIO, that, that totally focus on EV, uh, are uh, leading the, the race. And then the, the traditional car companies are also trying to compete and then trying to transition from gasoline to EV just to survive. Because if they don't make this transition, then it's very clear that they will be replaced, just like horses were replaced by cars 100 years ago. It's a very exciting race. And if you look at the battery, which is the probably the most important part of the vehicle. Today, globally, almost all the EV batteries, whether it's in North America, Europe, or Asia, they're almost all produced by Asian companies. And the top companies, of course, the largest is CATL, a Chinese company, and then also three Korean cell makers, SK, LG, SDI, um, also more uh, Chinese battery companies as well as Japanese companies. So, so Chinese, Korean, and Japanese battery companies today dominate this, this EV battery uh, space. And so I want to talk about uh, three things, government, entrepreneurs, and artificial intelligence. If you look at these three governments, US, Korea, and, and China, what these governments have done in this space is, for example, if you look at Korea, recently Korea had this K battery initiative. And, and the, the top three battery makers, LG, SK, and SDI, have all made very aggressive plans in, in the US, in, in uh, Europe, to build massive plants with car makers. For example, SK announced the largest battery plant with Ford in North America. LG also announced a, a very massive plant with, with uh, GM in North America. Basically, the U.S. market is, is almost, um, almost exclusively for, for Korean battery makers. The, the, big, the big three car makers in Detroit almost all uh, use Korean, Korean uh, batteries. The California car companies like Tesla tend to use more Chinese and Japanese b batteries, but the, the traditional, the big three, uh, all use Korean batteries. And then if you look at what the U.S. government did, 
so back in 2008, this was the last year of Bush, first year of Obama, the Department of Energy actually invested a lot into, into clean energy related research in universities. And because these are research projects, the size is much lower than infrastructure uh, investment. But actually that, that actually uh, had very exciting results. So around 2008, the Department of Energy invested significantly into university research, batteries, solar cells, fuel cells, water purification, uh, all those clean energy related technologies. And then what's very interesting is that five years later, five years after 2008, that's around 20, 2012, 2013, actually today, all of the major battery companies in the, in the US started four to five years after this major DOE investment. Do you wanna know why? It's because the major DOE investment went into students' PhD research in 2008. And then PhD takes about four to five years. When these guys finish their PhDs, they start companies. And so all the major battery companies, QuantumScape, uh, Solar Power, us, the, the top next generation battery companies today in the US will all start as a result of this. And also in 2010, Department of Energy gave uh, Tesla this massive loan. Back then it was about $400 million. And also uh, keep in mind, 2010, that was when Tesla just went public and their valuation was about $3 billion, tiny, tiny company. It was, uh, people used to call Tesla this small car company in California that no one really paid serious attention to, but the government gave them $400 million. Now Tesla is worth more than a trillion dollars, worth more than all the other car companies put together. So the US government uh, tends to invest in a lot of early stage research and early stage companies. Um, most of them will fail, but the ones that, that, that remain end up becoming very successful and uh, down the road. And then if you look at the Chinese government, uh, around 2015 and 2016, they implemented this white paper policy that encouraged car makers, electric car makers, to buy batteries from domestic Chinese battery suppliers rather than overseas Koreans and uh, Japanese battery suppliers. As a result of that, companies like CATL, BYD, especially CATL, which back then used to be very, very small. It was, CATL started in 2011. So around 2015, it was a tiny company. But because of this government initiative, today is the world's largest battery company with, with more than 30% of the global market cap. So we see a lot of these government initiatives. Of course, there is a lot of cooperation, but also competition. Different companies, different government fighting for themselves, competing. Some of that is positive. You end up with the best quality, the lowest cost, the highest efficiency. But also, some of that is um, 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 not so efficient. But but we've definitely seen a lot of these government initiatives with uh, pretty pretty interesting and um, exciting results. And then next, I want to talk about entrepreneurs. So if you look at the digital age, the computers, companies like Microsoft, Apple, social media, and uh, Bitcoin, and, and uh, social network, and uh, uh, that industry, that industry was completely transformed by several key entrepreneurs. And if you look at this current industry, electric car industry, electric cars, batteries, flying cars, it's also, this industry is also being transformed by entrepreneurs. And it's really difficult I mean, you cannot overestimate the power and the potential of a hungry, driven entrepreneur with a lot of resource. You, you cannot underestimate the power of that. I mean, 99% of these, these entrepreneurs will fail, but that one person that succeeds, they change the world. And we see a lot of these, these um, entrepreneurs, especially in the US, also in China, for example, of course, founders of Tesla, Lucid, Rivian, um, and uh, Joby, the flying car, and then in China, founders of NEO, CATL. Um, of course, not only these guys achieve great financial success, but also great inspirational stories for new generations to come. And, and our society, if you look at history, is defined by these different ages. Um, first, the, the digital age, 
the computing age, the social media age, now the EV age. And then in each age, you have these very inspirational entrepreneur stories that, that really inspire people because these people start amazing companies, amazing enterprises that, that change the world. And then lastly, I want to talk about is artificial intelligence. The goal of artificial intelligence is really about safety and sustainability. So today, if you look at all the EVs today, whether it's, it's land EVs or flying EVs, a big concern is safety. Um, uh, just recently, we, had, uh, we heard uh, GM, Hyundai have massive recalls because of battery safety. Also, sometimes you have these electric cars just parked on the street or being charged and all of a sudden catch on fire. So that's where a lot of innovation in manufacturing quality control comes in. The traditional manufacturing quality control is you just, you, you just work hard, improve the yield, improve the quality control. It, it's a matter of statistics. But actually the new manufacturing quality control is actually you, you try to monitor every single details. So think about if you flip a coin, the traditional thinking is 50-50 you'll get head or tail. Now, the new way of thinking is you flip a coin, you monitor everything, the position of your finger, the power of your finger, the wind, every detail. If you can do that, you can actually predict with 100% certainty if it's head or tail. And that's exactly what the, the industry is trying to do. Inside a vehicle, you could have hundreds to thousands of these cells. And, and car companies and battery companies are working together going all the way upstream to raw materials, mining, and then collecting all the data, complete data, every component, every detail step, step 24 seven, from all the, the mining, the incoming material, impurities, quality control to manufacturing, every details. You add a ton of sensors, every small details, temperature, pressure, all the details. And, and that is your manufacturing data. And then you combine that with the vehicle data, how the person drive the car, does he drive the car fast, slow, he charge the car fast, charge the car slow, he parks it out in the weather, it's cold, it's hot, he parks it in a nice garage, his habit, every detail. And by combining all this data, rather than leaving safety to statistics, because, because even if we have very good quality control, parts per million to parts per billion, when you have a massive amount of electric cars, hundreds of gigawatt hours of batteries, it's just a matter of time before something bad happens. So we really have to monitor every details. Don't leave safety to probability, but, but let very sophisticated artificial intelligence software to monitor every detail. Every detail of every component of every single step of the entire process 24 seven, monitor that. And then what you have is, is a software digital twin. It's almost like, think of a battery as a, as a person. Your health, part of it is, is, is dependent on your, your parents, your DNA. Part of it is dependent on your lifestyle. And imagine you go to a hospital, you get a checkup every day. Then you can actually detect maybe cancer, tumor, things much earlier before they become severe. So you can take care of these things. Exactly the same idea for batteries and, and electric transportation. Because now these are powered by batteries, not traditional engines. These are not just mechanical systems. These are mechanical and chemical systems. By, by having access to this very sophisticated data uh, control, you can actually monitor precisely the state of health. So then you can, you can predict incidents way before they happen. So rather than wait until all of a sudden the car catches on fire, a few months earlier, you'll get these warnings. You need to send the car to, to the dealer to change something, to, to fix something. So there's also one very exciting area that it's, it's disruption in manufacturing process and disruption in, in, in how you treat safety. And instead of thinking about safety as a hard, hardware thing, making this, this hardware safer, but also safety as a software, how to manage safety. So these are the three things we think um, will definitely play a big role in, 
in accelerating the adoption of electric transportation and further reducing uh, carbon footprint in the next few years. So government, entrepreneurs, and artificial intelligence. Thank you very much. Another big round of applause, please. Thank you very much. 99% of the entrepreneurs fail, but the 1% that do succeed will change the world. That was a very inspiring for all of us. New technologies and new industries are created thanks to entrepreneurship and their efforts. Thank you very much for your presentation on EVs.